If you want to be really good at color grading, you got to nail the skin tones first. It is always job number one in my workflow because once you get the skin tones right, everything else in the project tends to fall into place effortlessly. And achieving this requires a solid understanding of your tools and knowing how to accurately read your scopes. So today I'm gonna walk you through how I approach skin tones from the start, setting the stage for a fantastic overall look. We'll be diving deep into DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools and scopes. Additionally, I'll also introduce you to a DCTL by Mononotes that I absolutely love. It is not only effective, but also incredibly fast, uh, making it a go-to in my color grading arsenal. So without further ado, let's explore how these tools can transform your footage, enhancing both efficiency and quality. Let's dive in. Today we have four beautiful close-up shots of a woman, each with rich and vibrant colors and a beautiful bokeh effect in the background, which makes our subject pop. As you can see, the skin tones here are beautifully balanced, exhibiting a warm, lifelike quality. They also harmonize perfectly with the warm and vivid uh, backdrop. So how do we do that? Let me first show you what is going on with our color management in our project settings. We are in a CSD workflow, so we are not using DaVinci Resolve's automatic color management. Instead, we are set to DaVinci White RGB. Our timeline color space is DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, and our output color space is set to Reg 709 Gamma 2.4. Now let's go back to our color page to examine the node tree setup. As you can see, the first and last nodes in our structure are our color space transforms, CSDs, essential for managing our color workflow. If you're curious about how these and other nodes function and want a deeper dive into my node tree and grading workflow, I recommend pausing here and checking out my detailed tutorial on that. You can find the link in the top right corner of the screen. The second and third nodes are crucial for setting up our image. The second node is dedicated to adjusting exposure, ensuring that our luminance levels are just right. The third node is where we balance the image and establish a solid foundation for the subsequent uh, grading steps. Moving further down the node tree, the next two nodes are dedicated to enhancing saturation and making precise hue adjustments. Following these, I have a face refinement node here to specifically enhance facial features. For look development, the subsequent eight nodes are where the magic happens. In three of these nodes, I utilize the enhancer uh, to infuse our footage with the classic Kodak 2383 print film look, alongside halation and bloom effects here, and here to sprinkle some film grain for that authentic cinematic texture. Next, I've allocated three nodes for split toning, making cyan color adjustments, and using the film look creator for a touch of bleach bypass effect. Finally, the look is polished off with a lot uh, called Blue Green by uh, Colin Kelly, and some nuanced adjustments using, again, Colin Kelly's uh, latest look development plugin, uh, Contour. This comprehensive setup allows us to craft a meticulously balanced uh, filmic image. So the big question is how do I measure my skin tones? Let's start with the exposure. To ensure that our focal point, in this case the female talent, is properly exposed, I usually rely on the Omniscope's false color feature. But I realize not everyone may have access to this tool, so let's explore how we can achieve similar results using DaVinci Resolve's built-in scopes. First, we'll activate the qualifier tool uh, to isolate the skin tones we want to measure. Then make sure the waveform scope is open to monitor the exposure levels. Typically, skin tones uh, should fall somewhere between the 384 and 6 uh, for the IRE lines on the waveform. 
If we are shooting in daylight, the levels might be closer to 640, whereas in a darker environment, they would be around uh, 384. In our current scene, uh, which is overcast, you can see the skin tone levels are nicely centered between these lines, indicating a well-balanced exposure for the conditions. Next, uh, to ensure our skin tones look natural, we traditionally use the vector scope in DaVinci Resolve. First, we need to make sure the skin tone indicator is activated. If it is not, you can turn it on by selecting the option in the top menu and clicking on here. The skin tone line on the vector scope is a great guide. Uh, it helps ensure that the skin tones in your footage look natural when placed correctly on this line. So how do we know if the skin tones are indeed on this line? There are a few techniques you can employ. One effective method is to use the display qualifier focus tool. You can activate it here and then you need to select your qualifier tool. This combination will highlight on the scope exactly what you're pointing at in your footage. For example, as I point to this area here, it shows cyan colors uh, on the scope. When I point toward lips, on the other hand, it moves toward uh, red uh, or magenta. And now, if we point to the skin tone, we can tell that her skin tone sits near that skin tone line. While this visual feedback is extremely helpful, it can sometimes be tricky to distinguish if the skin tones are precisely on that line. So to have a better understanding of the skin tones here, uh, an effective alternative method is to use a mask. Here's how we do it. First, we create a new node after our output color space transform. It needs to be here because we need a Rec 709 uh, color space. Next, we create a mask that isolates just the skin tones. Once the mask is set, we activate the highlights to view only the isolated area. Now with the mask in place, we can see the skin tones more clearly on the vector scope. If the skin tone line is still hard to see, you can try enabling the zoom feature on the vector scope uh, by clicking here. This will magnify the area, making it easier to ensure the skin tones are accurately aligned with the skin tone line. As you can see in this case, it is staying right on the skin tone line, uh, but if you need to make any further adjustments, uh, the HDR wheels or the primary wheels are your tools of choice. You just need to adjust these until the skin tones perfectly match the line. Once you're satisfied with the skin tone alignment, don't forget to remove the mask so your adjustments apply uniformly across the entire image. Now, as a third option, I want to introduce you an incredibly useful tool developed by a talented colorist and software developer, Stefan ringal schwantner You can find this utility pack on his website, mononotes.com. Stefan has a bunch of different DCTLs and tools here. Uh, the one that we'll be focusing on today is the Utility DCTLs pack, available right here. DCTL stands for DaVinci Color Transform Language. This is a feature of DaVinci Resolve uh, allowing uh, programmers, developers and uh, color scientists to harness all the tools in DaVinci Resolve to create their own effects and tools. DCTLs are installed just like a lot uh, into your DaVinci Resolve LUT folder. Uh, so you just simply download the pack and open your LUTs folder in the DaVinci Resolve uh, project settings window and then drag and drop it into the folder here. Uh, but remember, you'll need to restart DaVinci Resolve afterward. Now, I place this DCTL at our timeline level because I want it to apply globally to all my clips. As you might know, clip level adjustments are specific to individual clips, whereas timeline level adjustments affect all clips in our project. To do this, uh, we need to first create a node and add a DCTL. Now we can select the tool or DCTL you want to apply. The utility DCTLs pack comes with three tools, mono balance, mono clipping and mono isolator. The isolator one lets you isolate a particular color, while the clipping tool shows you if and when your blacks and whites are clipping. And today we will be using the balance tool. When we switch this tool on, uh, we get this overlay on our images. 
What it does is that it looks at our vector scope and highlights anything sitting on the skin tone line in yellow. So in other words, if your skin tones are on the line, it highlights them as yellow. And anything green or magenta means you have shifted away from the line, either towards magenta or towards green. However, this shouldn't mean that having green or magenta in your skin tones is bad. On the contrary, it's certainly okay to have some magenta in the shadow areas, or even depending on the look you are aiming for, you may want to have some level of green or magenta in it. As a matter of fact, for this shot in particular, I did want to have some green in it. What matters here is the consistency in skin tones across clips. And this is exactly the big advantage of this tool, because with this tool turned on, you can easily match skin tones across clips. For instance, let's go to our light box here. If this tool is on, you can look at multiple images at once and make sure they all have the same skin tones. If the yellow highlights are not showing in all of your clips, you can right click here and update your thumbnails. Also another advantage is that if you have multiple people in a shot, you can again easily check your skin tones without the need to create multiple masks or moving a mask around. Lastly, in this tool, you have a few more options. This one, for instance, turns anything with neutral colors to green. So it is uh, very helpful when you're balancing your image at the beginning of your grading workflow. Monochrome uh, turns your image to black and white, uh, which is good to check your contrast levels. And finally, the exposure heat map helps you expose your image by showing you areas that are overexposed or underexposed. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into perfecting skin tones using DaVinci Resolve and some incredibly helpful third-party tools. I hope this tutorial has enlightened you on the nuances of color grading and equipped you with new techniques to enhance your projects. Once again, thanks for joining me today, and if you found this tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for more updates. Please share your thoughts and any questions you have in the comments below. Uh, I love hearing from you and am eager to see how you apply these techniques in your work. Until next time, keep creating and keep refining those beautiful images. Thank you.